Hello, Taurus. It's Amal um, Magad Tarot, and this is your November Tarot card reading. Let's have a look. Sees. See what comes up. Let's see. Let's see. Taurus, 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 Taurus. November, November, November. Mm. We got the moon. We're going inwards. And this is your unconscious, sensitive, inner emotions and responses. Cool. Then we got Saturn. And this is the part of you that accepts challenge to gain wisdom. Love it. Nice. Nice little roundabout. Your immortal spirit, purpose, and destiny is involved. Look at that. That's pretty deep. Your moon. That's like your feminine energy. That's like your inner self-conscious, subconscious. While I sleep, I dream it. You know, kind of energy. The ethereal otherworldly your mind's eye your daydreams that world so your inner feelings about yourself and then we have saturn who is about yeah that discipline that willpower that comes from structure that comes from consistency and whether or not that's a, if that's a theme in someone's life they probably struggled with it at first and then made it a point to be good at it get good at it stay good at it or somebody who it comes naturally to but either way it's a prominent theme it's about personal transformation too it's about growing and learning the lessons over a generational run so not just like oh i ran that red line and got a ticket i learned today it's more like i learned that if i lie to people over time everybody just thinks you're a liar and they never believe you it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf that's over time like i gotta really witness some of that but anyways it's like i learned a lesson too so there's something something of value something good came of it i have leveled up because i know more even though these challenges these consequences i've dealt with for a while have been not fun i am learning so we have that in the inner world and then we have how you know your immortal your immortal spirit purpose and destiny but the sun really is about like how people perceive you like do they see you as like the way that you see yourself do they see challenges excuse me do they see you as a very stable person as a very disciplined person as a very composed person do they see that Mm, good. Is that something you're working on or something that comes naturally to you? Which, which, which? So the moon and the sun. Let's look at what kind of vibe. They're bringing in. They're bringing in the Cancer vibe. And they're bringing in the Leo vibe. Saturn, of course, is bringing in some of that Capricornian energy, which places us at work or puts us in the finances or, or puts us even in, like, your social interactions, your status, you know. But like it feels more like a business status um and or your socioeconomic status too um so yeah leo capricorn and cancer could be dealing with one of them ain't it fun Oh, I'm gonna get copyrighted. It sounds too accurate. Sounds just like oh, oh. We got some cards. We got some jumpers. Got some cards. Jumping cards. Hold on. Please hold. Technical difficulties. Okay. Look the little dogs. Let's see. Let's see. Take the Taurus. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. So, what's going on? What's happening? The Knight of Swords. Drum. Hot headery. Hot headedery. It's nothing new. I know you're a Taurus. It's nothing new. The stubbornness, the ready to fightness. Well, drama. That's your, that's your jump off point. So, you, more than me, have some explaining to do. Then we have the Knight of Wands. Okay, we got two knights. Then we got the Six of Swords. I'm trying to move on. 
We got the star. Let's see. We got the five of pentacles in reverse and the nine of cups. Oh. Some of you see it. I see it. We all see it. But I feel like the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Wands, it just drama and activity and like it's either there's a duo that is stirring up drama and activity in that in that area doing too much together talking to yapping too much and doing too much it's either like two people coming together doing the yapping and the talking or it's two people at odds doing yapping and talking like are you in cahoots or are you right because six of swords tells me about moving on it makes me feel like it's like is it like friends who are in drama and then they're breaking up because one person did too much and the other person said too much the other person looking away they'll talk sh about you any chance they get this person did too much looking on like what what what's going on hey come back let's talk about this and this person's like no i gotta talk about it with other people not you directly this person is like you know what it just feels like two equals you know like so that's what makes me feel like a friend or a relationship just two people doing something that's not necessarily correct and they're not seeing eye to eye and we see the just wanting to move on we see moving on the calm of it all it's like i want to move on because i don't want drama i want to move on because i don't want all this stuff that there's unnecessary stuff going on Right? Learning lessons, I think, about friends, broader themes about friendship. You may have been down this road before and learned your lesson. But you may have learned your lesson, especially this time. We see the Saturn. We think about ourselves. And we think about what we're giving off for this person to be acting this way towards us. And that Six of Swords tells me everything I need to know. Although it may be hard, I must move on. Not in like a five of swords way where I have regrets and there's some room for like reconciliation, but this this mindset is more like I'm moving on. It's not gonna be easy. I'm gonna have to wade through the water. Them road waters are rough, but I gotta do a fresh start. Take my essentials, what I need, and go. I need to pick up myself from the situation and move on. I got to go. And I think that comes from a place of just having faith and hope that things will just work out in the future. Um, but I do think that someone feels very abandoned and left and, or misunderstood. Uh, so the love, the star is associated with Aquarius. As you know, Aquarius is one of them lone rangers. They, they can do this thing solo. And they're not lonely. They like that because then it's like, let me go to this town. You don't know who I am. I can pretend to be a cowboy. Let me go to this other town. I'm going to pretend to be a doctor. It's illegal, probably. But they have that uniqueness to them. They have that individuality to them where they march to their own beat. But the star card isn't so much about Aquarius. It's about hope. It's about enlightenment. It's about things move forward and just like the inevitable of that. That things keep going. Things shift. And it's almost like a reminder that, you know, just a real, one day, you, sometimes you're, the way that you're thinking about things just kind of shift. And that awakening seems to be worth that wait. And, you know, just like understanding that a lot of things just are like that, where they just take time to comprehend, like, you know, you have to do some observational stuff, stuff outside of you, stuff inside of you to really reach a certain point where you can learn to understand your your challenges not just see them as attacks so five pentacles feeling abandoned the abandonment issue and then we have the nine of cups a wish a wish a wish fulfilled i feel like in this context a wish fulfilled is really like kind of learning a lesson so that five of pentacles 
being in reverse. The, although it does represent abandonment, it might be the per other person feeling abandoned by you. But I feel like moving on is an enlightenment. And although certain perspectives on the outside it will look like, you know, you abandon somebody on the inside, I feel like it's like something that you do because you are trying to, again, gain wisdom through challenges, learn how to do something that is difficult, cut that, you know, cut the fat, <laughs> you know, cut somebody that's not, that's doing too much or saying or causing drama, disrupting the harmony that we all want. So those are hard lessons in life. Those kind of feel on par with that Saturn long-term lesson. Um, depending on how many times you repeated this pattern or how deeply you feel about the situation or person, feels very saddenly. It's like it's going to be a big lesson you know, in your life that you're going to refer to or maybe even years down the line be like, you know what, I, I think I'm actually traumatized by that. I'm really, it's really hard for me to trust people because etc. I like the Nine of Cups at the end of your reading because it means a wish is fulfilled. And, I, and I, I already thought that maybe that wish was just kind of seeing yourself in the past and what you would have done and then experiencing something similar and doing the opposite, doing the thing that you thought about doing that last time and standing in it. Nine of Cups is a wish fulfilled. That could be just something good for your soul, like something that just validation or like proof of spiritual growth by just being more mature by actually understanding the lesson and not just being like, oh, I did this, I should do this, blah, blah, blah. Just, but just fundamentally, it always comes down to just being unbothered, eh? Which is what a Capricorn is, because they're, they're not in competition with you. They're in competition with where they're trying to go, and that's it. You can't even visualize the luxury that Capricorns want. <laughs> actually, Taurus is a, are, are a close second, for sure. But yeah, Nine of Cups is like, there's something that is just, maybe that's the aha moment when you realize that this is what you wanted. You said, you prayed, I need the right people around me or I want to have this da 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 Didn't realize that would have to mean that people who didn't fit into that life were out. And you didn't anticipate that, but you learned the lesson and you're like, okay, okay, okay. And I learned a thing or two about manifestation. Now watch what I do with Krispy Kremes. Boy, I would love to, whatever it is, however you manifest stuff. But yeah, there it is. That's your reading. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's your November. Um, just So just pay attention. Pay attention to, you know, them dynamics and connections and which ones are just kind of stressing you out, which ones are enlightening you on how you really want things to be. And yeah. And yeah, and that's just how I am. That's your reading. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And check out my Etsy shop. Why not? It's I got candles. I got gemstones. I got fragrance oils. You name it. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.